College football fans, what up? It's the one and only Cole Thompson here. And now with spring football over, the second transfer portal window closed, I figured we'd start a new series on this channel where I break down what defines a winning season for every contender. Now I'm not going to go through all 134 teams because everyone's goals are completely different depending on where you are going into the year. But if I think you have a shot at making the college football playoff, if I think you have a shot of actually winning the whole damn thing, you're going to be on this list. And I figured today, especially after the recent moves that have come in the transfer portal, let's talk about Oregon. What defines a winning season for the Ducks as they enter a new era of college football in the Big Ten, which still feels extremely weird to say. And after riddling the transfer portal with a ton of talent, proven commodities that probably will make them one of the biggest threats to hoist up the national title. But if you're new here, welcome on into the channel, people. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe down below, giving your thoughts on what you think a winning season looks like in Eugene at Autzen Stadium as the Ducks go quackers in the Big Ten. Make sure that you also are telling your friends, your family, your mortal enemies, best of bros, college football aficionados, Big Ten faithful, and of course, Duck fans everywhere about this channel because we're talking college football every single day and we're not on the race to become just the number one YouTube show talking about our favorite sport, but the number one college football community here on YouTube. Follow me on social media wherever you got it, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the same handle, at Mr. Cole Thompson, and it's the exact same as my YouTube handle, so when you hit subscribe here, just go on over to one of the other apps and hit follow there, and if you want a question read live on air, email me at ColeThompsonWriting at gmail.com. Or make sure that you slide the DMs on Twitter at Mr. Cole Thompson. What defines a winning season for Oregon? Well, for many of people, including I would say most Duck fans, it's not making the college football playoff. But they are a favorite. They are plus 250, according to FanDuel as of this morning, to make it into the dozen dance. And you got to remember, this is a completely new playoff era. It's no longer four teams. You got 12 teams. So the odds are a little bit different. But the part that's really interesting is that most people are saying, no, 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 no. They, they can win the whole thing. And they can. I am a believer of it. Vegas is a believer of it. Because if they have them coming in at plus 850 odds, according to FanDuel, as of this morning, that is the fourth best odds in the country. That are better odds than Michigan. That is better odds than Penn State. The only few teams that have better odds than them, and there's only one in the Big Ten, it's Ohio State. And you can make an argument that Ohio State is the most complete team in college football. And you can make the same argument that right behind them pulling up the rear, it is Oregon. Go back and do me a favor. I am a true believer of this. And I've stayed on my ground for as long as humanly possible. And I will spew this nonsense into the universe until I am cut and dry. Um, I believe that there is a multiverse. I believe that we have one of infinite universes around the world. And if we were to go to Earth 317.9, we would see a scenario where Oregon doesn't lose to Washington. Not just in Seattle, but also... In Las Vegas, they're undefeated. They're going to the college football playoff. They beat Texas, and they end up playing against Michigan. And maybe, just maybe, at this point, they do win a college football playoff game underneath Dan Lanning. Maybe they do have a national title. And now we're talking about Oregon as, instead of just replenishing talent, they're building off of it and now creating a chapter and a catechism that might end up being something of sustainability long term. You got to look at what they've done in the transfer portal. There have been very few teams to make elite moves. Now, I'm not saying that there haven't been teams that have gone out and added in quantity. There haven't been teams that have added in quality. But you just look at the names. The quantity and the quality that resides now in Autzen Stadium is mind-boggling. You lose Bo Nix. Okay, you find an immediate replacement for him in Dylan Gabriel, who has six seasons of starting, of starting reps. You lose a guy in Troy Franklin. Well, you go find a number one wide receiver in Evan Stewart, who may end up being the number two, similar to what Tez Johnson was last year when he came in over from Troy. You need to go ahead and upgrade your defensive line after losing Brandon Dolis. Guess what you did? You brought in Derek Hardman from Michigan State. You want to get better at cornerback. You lose Kyrie Jackson. You bring in Jabbar Muhammad. Not to mention, you also recently brought in Peyton Woodyard, one of the former four-star talents out of Alabama. This is a team that has not just added in 14 difference makers. They've added in 14 studs. Over a dozen playmakers who immediately can factor into this team's success. And that's the reason why I think that you have to consider them to be a playoff team or bust. Now, I'm not saying you can win a national title. Here's the one thing that I will always preface with. There is one team, truly, that I believe has to feel like if they don't win a national title, they are ending up falling short of the goal. But everyone else, you make it to the college football playoff, I think that's a good start line. Now, for Oregon, in my opinion, with what was added in, what was being returned, 
over 78% of the production, the experience that you're bringing in on offense and defense, the consistency of what you have with Will Stein back in the huddle, and the adaptability to know that you have sustainable growth past this year, it's winning multiple playoff games. I think when you look at Oregon, if they were to go, let's just say 11-2, and two, just like they did in the Pac-12 last year, and it happens to be against the same team, not Washington, but Ohio State. You lose two games to the same team, back-to-back, -back, and end up falling short of the goal, you're still in the playoff. You're a Big Ten school. You're not going to be left out. And 11 and 2, 11 wins, that automatically, in my opinion, is a qualifier. At this point, you're just playing for seeding. And let's say you get the five seed. Well, I just think you need to win two games, two games that year, and then you feel like that you are sustainable. You're making it to the final four. That would have been the exact same goal. You were a fourth place odds going into the regular season. You finished with a top three recru recruiting, I mean, a top 10 recruiting class, a top two transfer portal class. And you've laid down a foundation in the Big Ten saying, listen, we get it. We know that we're the newcomers. We know that we are fresh meat. But you are quackers if you think that we're going to sit by idly with Phil Knight money, with Nike boosting, with what we were able to do to retain Dan Lanning, even though he never really wanted to leave because if he's feel comfortable here, we know that we're going to be around for the foreseeable future. So pick your ass up and get ready for war, people, because the Big Ten it may be in the Midwest, it may be traveling East Coast, but it's also going to go on the West Coast. And we're going to mean damn sure good business about this. You win multiple playoff games, that's a good start. And you know what this feels like a lot of? Remember Michigan a few years ago when they started to finally pick up momentum where they were getting to the end goals and you were seeing Jim Harbaugh actually create a sustainability where it didn't matter what was on the offensive side, what was on the defensive side. They just knew that they were going to overpower you and they got to the playoff and then they lost, and they got to the playoff, and then they lost, and then they got to the playoff a third time, and then they finally were able to claim the victors. Who has it better than Jack Harbaugh? Well, Jim, because if he won the damn thing and also got a pretty big pay raise to go to the NFL, but they laid down a four line. They laid down a foundation where the next crop of players could easily go ahead and take weight. And you look at this Oregon team, you don't have to send everybody pro. Yeah, Dylan Gabriel's going to be gone, but who's sitting behind him and learning for a year? The quarterback that many people thought was going to be the heir apparent to Bo Nix and Dante Moore. So you give him another season to learn, and you feel okay if he has to start. Evan Stewart still has two more years of eligibility. He could end up going to the NFL draft if he absolutely crushes it, or he could follow a similar route to Tess Johnson. The same thing goes for your offensive line. The same thing goes for your defensive line. The same thing goes for every single position out there to where you feel like it's just a plug-and-play replacement year in and year out. For me in 2024, getting 10 wins in a brand new conference where you have no idea what the travel logistics are going to be, when you're going to have to make the trips, how it's going to be with the lag away, coming back home, what is practice going to be like preparing for these long road games, any one of those things, 10 wins is a great baseline because 10 wins in the Big Ten, any program like Oregon with the prominence, the ratings, the boostings, that's going to get you in the playoff. And then from there, all you got to do is show that you've ever proven that you can win. And by the way, if you show that you can win with these transfers, the ones that you've been making sure come on in for the last two years, that you've been winning with these recruiting classes, isn't that kind of a saying of where Oregon is trending underneath Dan Lanning? And isn't that kind of backing up the Brinks trucks and saying, yeah, he delivered. We can go ahead and continue our promise of giving him more money. Because if this is the end goal, right? You've been building something for the last few years and trying to show this is where it finally comes to fruition. And you were three plays away last year from maybe being in the hunt for a national title. That's really where Oregon is. So to me, you get to the college football playoff, you win a couple games, you lay down a foundation in the Big Ten saying we mean business. That defines a winning season, in my opinion. Yeah, would it be nice to win a national championship? Absolutely. But there's 134 teams in college football, and only one gets to claim that title. It's been almost impossible to see somebody come close with a three-peat. Georgia and Alabama in the last two uh, in the last 20-plus years were the closest. And even then, they still came up short. It's why it's almost impossible to do. So for Oregon, if you just make it to the college football playoff, win several games, I think you've done a good enough job laying down a foundation to where people are going to have to start paying attention to you moving forward but give me your thoughts down below what do you think defines a winning season for oregon make sure that you're also following me on social media tiktok facebook instagram twitter at mr cole thompson i talk college football over there all the time 
Make sure that also you are telling your friends, your family, your mortal enemies, best of bros, college football aficionados, Big Ten faithful, and of course, the ducks everywhere about this channel because I talk Oregon, I talk all college football, I love college football, and I would love to be your number one show every single day as we create the number one college football community. Until next time, folks, I am Cole Thompson. Keep it easy.